Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the University of Dundee uh, Master of Education webinar. My name is Helen Spiropoulos, and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Associates. And joining me all the way from the university is Marie. Good evening to you, Marie. Hi, Helen, and everybody else. It's great to be here and joining you tonight, so welcome. Okay, and uh, welcome to everyone that has joined us. I can see there's quite a lot of you um, that are attending at the moment. So we're going to quickly start uh, the webinar. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to introduce you to Stafford and what we do. And I'm then going to hand you over to Marie, who's going to take you through the program. At the end of the presentation, if you look on the right-hand side uh, of your screen, uh, you do have uh, a section where you can actually type out all your questions. And Marie and myself will be able to, to uh, get back to you on all the, those questions. Uh, what I will be doing as well is I will be looking at some of those questions quite closely because a lot of you might have very, very similar, if not identical questions. So we'll try and group them all together and uh, give you all the answers to that. Okay, so let us get started. Uh, who is Stafford Associates? We were established in 1993 and we are a resource centre for distance learning education in the Middle East. And we are currently the resource centre for five UK universities, one of which is the University of Dundee. Now, we do offer a variety of programmes, uh, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, um, MEDs, doctorates. So we really do have programmes for, for everyone. And our main function at Stafford is to assist you throughout the administration process, the recruitment process, getting you that perfect unconditional offer that you're looking for. And we also do provide some administrative support as well. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Marie and I will be joining you towards the end of the presentation. Over to you, Marie. That was great. Thank you very much, Helen. Okay, as I say, welcome to everybody. Um, it's good to see you here today. My name is Marie Beresford Day, and I'm a lecturer in education over here at the University of Dundee. I'm also the MED program convener and the group lead for any students undertaking their studies by Stafford Associates. So while Stafford support you through the recruitment uh, process at at your end, I'm at the other end in, here in Dundee also supporting you through that as well. So, and as you go through your studies, you'll see quite a bit of me from, from time to time. Okay, so if we have a look at the University of Dundee just quickly and see what we're all about. Um, as you know, we're a, a university over in Scotland on the East Coast, so we do enjoy the sunshine from time to time. Um, we make a difference in the real world. Um, we do this by working across subject boundaries. So we are the School of Education and Social Work, and that also includes the Community Learning and Development um, certificates. So we do have uh, different perspectives within our teaching. We adopt an enterprising approach, and this is embedded throughout the curriculum, as well as drawing from uh, local and global um, initiatives, frameworks, theories, and so on. And we are a modern university working on solutions to 21st century problems. Um, and we do this by questioning what we do, why we do it, and encouraging you to do the same. Um, and we do this through bringing in that diversity global diversity by engaging in global research, teaching, and through our partnerships, which is our partnership with Stafford Associates. Okay, so what is our purpose? Well, we do focus on three key themes, um, and that's improving social, cultural, and physical well-being. We promote the sustainable use of global resources, and we try to shape the future through innovative design and trying to encourage you to do the same. We do have a global reputation, um, which is ranked very highly. You can see that from the list there. And we are very proud of 
the different awards that we achieve year on year. Okay, so what about the EVET, the program um, that we hope you will sign up and carry out studies towards? Um, we are part time, primarily a part time program, but we do also offer the fast track study, and this offers you some flexibility and autonomy. Um, we deliver most of our programs, uh, modules via blended learning. Um, and this is done sometimes face to face, and I'll talk more about that later, as well as working online through the virtual learning environment. So you'll get teaching sessions similar to the webinars that you're having now. We are practice based, and it is a professional development learning qualification that's also recognised by the IB, and again, I'll talk about that later. We have students from all sectors, whether this is early years, right the way through to higher education, and we do have students around the world. We have numerous pathways throughout the MED, and again, that links us back to the flexibility that we have. Um, it is an internationally recognised postgraduate qualification within education. Um, and we do treat students equally, whether you are studying at a distance or um, whether you are, you are on campus. Okay, so why consider the EMED? We have a, a quotation there that's taken from a report that was written by Graham Donaldson in 2011. Um, and his report highlights the importance of master's level learning. Now this was specific to Scotland, but then we know that this transfers around the world. So he looks at what we call level 11 skills, so master's level skills and attributes that will transfer, such as critically exploring your practice and questioning the status quo, and how that um, helps you within your day-to-day -day practice within education. Um, as tutors on the MED programme, we are continuously seeing our students' practice being influenced by your studies at master's level. So, the master's then, the MED programme, it's a suite of level 11 to master's level postgraduate study that brings together theory and aligns this with your practice. It encourages you to reflect and draw on your experiences and to try to understand how this matches with theory and how we can take that to another level. Level. It enables you to question why you do the things that you do within the classroom or working with colleagues, students, families, and how that practice can be enhanced. So the key underpinning nature of the Master of Education program is to support you as a reflective practitioner, you to be an inquirer, and also to draw on your own educational research as well as that as the published researchers. It's to have an impact on your professional practice both within the classroom and also the leadership of others, even if you don't have a formal leadership role. So you'll do this by reflecting critically and building on the competences that you've developed throughout your practice and your career. And you are going to develop the attributes and also perhaps highlight your professional values and develop these further to enhance your professional practice. The MED has a range of named awards. And you can see there that there's quite a list of them. And at the top there, we have the Master of Education in Leading Learning and Teaching. This is our generic named award. So if you don't opt for one of the ones below, this is what you will um, exit with unless you undertake the postgraduate certificate or the um, postgraduate diploma level. So to obtain a Master of Education, you will need to complete 180 credits of study, um, and generally that is 60 credits per academic year if you're going for the part-time route, or if you are going for fast-track route, you will be taking that 60 credits in one semester rather than the two. 
You can't exit at the postgraduate certificate level or the diploma level and then return within five years to complete your MS. You don't need to do it all um, in one sitting. You can exit and then return. There are opportunities for credit exemption and this does depend on your previous study as long as that study has been at master's level. And we would check that upon your application. So to meet some of those named awards, uh, we have a, a range of optional modules available to you there. Um, and the ones that we can see with asterisk generally relate to a named award. Um, there'll be more information on this throughout your recruitment process, so your application process. And you do have the two optional modules if you're taking the full Master of Education without any credit exemption. You'll have three core modules and two optional modules. And the optional modules are those that we can see on the screen there. The core modules are reflecting upon practice or research methods and then finally finishing the full Master of Education with the dissertation. Each of the modules there on the screen are 30 credit modules. The only 60 credit module we have is the dissertation, the final, the final one, where you are bringing together, is culminating your studies up until that point, bringing it all together so you can demonstrate your mastery, your skills and knowledge at level 11. So we do have a typical route through the MED and like I say this is if you are completing the whole of the MED um, without any credit exemption for prior learning and you would generally start with reflection upon practice and finish with the dissertation. You can see that in the middle we have the two optional modules followed by the research methods. As I mentioned previously, there are opportunities for you to exit at certain levels. So we have at certificate level, at diploma level, or finally the full master's level. Okay. Depending on whether you take the IB route or not, some of those may change slightly. But again, we would I'd notify you of this on application. So although this seems quite a simple and um, typical route through that we do have a lot of flexibility and the team at Stafford Associates will also help you to um, understand the, the route that's best for you that you're going to be most that's going to most benefit you. As I mentioned, we are approved and recognized by the International Baccalaureate. So if you are interested uh, within the future of working for the IB or if you're currently working within the IB then this may be something that you want to attach to your um, your program of study. So there are three certificates or three awards available that you could opt for one or two of these awards. The first of those is the certificate in leadership practice. Now there's no prerequisite from the IB of any experience so you don't need to have been working in an IB school at any time to be able to work towards that. The second one then we have the advanced certificate in leadership research and there are the two pathways for this certificate. One pathway that takes you through if you don't have any IB experience or there's an alternative pathway if you have been working in the IB school in an IB school uh, with three years of teaching experience within that organisation or within the IB. And then finally we have the advanced certificates in learning and teaching research and for this certificate the IB specify that you must have three years teaching experience within an IB school. Again, this is something that the team at Stafford Associates will help you to identify which one will be most appropriate for you. Okay, so we have um, a few different routes there. This is really just to summarize what I just mentioned, that we have the, the key areas. One of those really the teaching and learning research where you require, must have a three years IB experience or the leadership route where you have the two different options of 
taken a pathway through that doesn't that doesn't require IB experience or the pathway where you have to have three years. So again, there's some flexibility within the IB pathways. Okay, what do we expect of you? I'll have a little chat about this and then I'll also tell you what you can expect of us um, in delivering the, the education and the support to yourself as you take your, undertake your studies with us at Dundee. Um, so we expect of you really to take responsibility for your own learning. We're not here to chase you, to follow you up. You are adults and professionals. Um, and you take that on board and demonstrate autonomy within your studies. We're all time to time where sometimes we give you a gentle nudge, um, but really you know what availability you have for um, to undertake your studies, what you know you have for your professional life, you have your home life, and then you'll find out how the studies will fit into that. We also require you to keep in contact with your module tutor so we can support you where necessary. Um, if we don't know what's happening or where you are, if you don't ask questions, we don't know how to be able to support you. So that, that one really is important. So we do expect you to be using up-to-date knowledge and the module materials will give you a platform for that and then you'll take that a step further and bring your context into your reading and writing around the different themes of your studies. Um, most of the mo modules will ask you to undertake a professional inquiry, uh, whether that's researching the published information or whether it's carrying out your own research. And then, of course, we do have the requirement for academic skills, so the confidence in presentation structure and academic register. So importantly, what you can expect from us as a student if you join us here at Dundee, um, regular um, tutorials from your tutor or with your tutor, and these can be done by, by email if it's a simple question, or if you want a one-to-one -one tutorial, we can arrange for this, often that's by Skype, we also have the Blackboard learning environment which enables us to organise uh, virtual classrooms for you to drop in, uh, virtually of course. Uh, we also offer the local face-to-face -face workshops for core modules and I'll talk more about that later on, as well as all the online learning and teaching within the written modules that we have available and the additional reading. Formative assessment opportunities, that's for you to submit a piece of work to us so we can give you feedback on that to enable you to be fully prepared for your final assessment. We don't have exams in the modules, they are all 100% through course, assessed through coursework. And we do, or we can offer you support with academic writing via our academic skills centre. So there's quite a bit of support that we can offer you. So the entry requirements to um, the MEd programme, no matter which level, whether that's Certificate, Diploma or Master of Education, they are all the same requirements. Uh, we do have the two options, whether you're workplace-based or non-workplace-based for those of you who may not currently be working in a relevant environment. Um, so for the workplace-based routes, then you must be currently working in a relevant setting. Um, this is for those of you who wish to enhance your professional learning and improve your career prospects. For this, you must have an undergraduate degree, and if your undergraduate degree wasn't taught in English, then you must have an IELTS of 6.5 or equivalent in English language. The requirements are similar for those in the non-workplace-based route, apart from you don't necessarily have to be currently working in an educational setting, but you must have work uh, previously within the relevant setting 
and have had some form of teaching experience to be able to draw from and reflect on quite significantly. Other than that, the requirements are the same for each of the routes. Okay, so up on the screen now you can see some of the feedback from what our current and previous students have said. And one thing that, as I previously mentioned, that comes through quite regularly is um, how it is the studies have enabled students to enhance their practice and improve their working, uh, whether they were in the classroom or whether that is supporting others within a leadership role. And also the, the tutor support that has given, we do have great feedback in regard, with regards to that. Okay, as I previously mentioned, uh, we do offer workshops for the core modules. Um, we have a workshop, the initial workshop is the induction module, and then we also hold a workshop which introduces you to research. These are held locally in the UAE and they're an opportunity for students to, to network uh, which is vital and to, to be able to build those relationships with your peers and they continue those relationships throughout your studies and our students do comment on how important these are to each of you for your studies and help benefit your own thinking as you draw on, uh, drawing on other people's perspectives. We're also an opportunity to meet with the university tutors. Um, I'm out there regularly with my, uh, with my colleagues as well. And we enjoy the opportunity to be able to meet you. And we can highly recommend the workshops. They're also um, an opportunity for you to be able to um, obtain that understanding of what it means to be studying at master's level and build your confidence around this because for some of you it may be a while since you've carried out such formalized studying and um, some of you it may be the first time that you have studied at master's level so we try and prepare you and give you good preparation at the workshop of moving forward in your studies. Okay, you can see online there the tuition fees from uh, Staff and Associates and they will uh, discuss this with you and the flexible monthly installments. So please do speak to the team of staffers about the tuition fees. And you can see the application deadline there for uh, commencing in April is 12th of March 2018. And on that note, I would like to invite Helen back and invite questions from you. So thank you very much for listening. Excellent. Thank you so much, Marie. And uh, as Marie said, we have uh, now opened uh, the question box. So please feel free to start typing your questions. I see we already have a question from Pharrell. Um, Pharrell has started a master's degree in education with a university here in Dubai and has finished four modules already and wants to know is there any possibility for RPL? Yes, RPL um, being recognition of prior learning and if, if the study, previous study has been at master's level and we can align that with level 11, uh, we can offer up to 50% RPL um, for your studies if you continue in the full master's program. And each of the credit exemptions or RPL, they are um, measured on an individual basis. So we take into account all your previous study and we will um, offer the relevant RPL based on all of that. But it is very much an individual process. Excellent. And I can see Amber has got uh, quite a few questions. Um, her first question is uh, one that we get quite often. Uh, will the degree certificate state online distance learning? No, the degree certificate is no different to a student who is based on campus here at Dundee. Um, so it, it won't state that. 
Um, and I know sometimes people get a little bit anxious about whether that will come through. And what we want to celebrate is your learning, whether you're at a distance or on campus. Okay, and uh, Amber again um, seems that uh, she would like to try and finish the program at, in a shorter time period. Um, is this possible? Can it be completed uh, in less than 18 months? We, yes, um, we're looking at approximately 20 months and obviously that does depend on the what happens throughout the process because we do have the fast track option but that does mean that you will be studying two modules within one semester, which is quite a significant undertaking, but it is doable depending on circumstances. Um, and also we do have that flexibility. So if you do start off on a fast track route, which would take you approximately 20 months to complete, um, but then decide for whatever reason, maybe you work or life circumstances change, um, at the end of the semester, then you can slow things down if you wish to, to then go down to the part-time route, or vice versa. Okay, and Omar's question is, uh, is this program recognised worldwide? It is. It's a master's level program, and the University of Dundee is definitely recognised worldwide. As I say, we have students all over the world, uh, from all different nationalities, um, and they enjoy the, like I say, the celebration of undertaking master's level learning and being successful in that. Okay, and um, this is quite a popular question, Marie. Uh, can the students actually start uh, with a full-time route and then change uh, to part-time? They can indeed, but it must be at the end of a semester rather than part way through modules. Um, but if there are difficulties, for example, if there are health problems or any circumstances that will interfere with the study, then we have um, areas perhaps potentially for extension requests or temporary withdrawal. So we have a few options available to us, but to transfer from a fast track route onto the part time route, that must be done um, at the end of this semester. Mm. Um, and Ferial's uh, obviously asking about um, the RPL, and uh, she has a, they have a problem with the transcript uh, of modules. Um, it's it's a little bit difficult to try and obtain this this transcript, um, but they may be able to get an informal report from the local Dubai campus which states uh, which courses have been enrolled in and, and the grades for each one of those. Uh, would that suffice uh, to be able to, to look at the RPL process? Yes, as long as it's on some formal um, either email address from the university, um, so we know it is from the university, or letterhead, then yes, that would be suffice. We would also need to make sure that it is at level 11. So, if you are going to get a letter of confirmation from the university, they need to specify what local level that has been undertaken and then we can match that with our Scottish levels. Absolutely. Um, and Ferial, please do get in touch with your academic consultant at Stafford or myself and, and we'll be able to guide you a bit more on that as well. Okay, and Omar, um, how much do I, if I do exit with a postgraduate certificate, how much time do I have to eventually do the masters? Up to five years, you can return it. So you have quite a lot of time in between to be able to return to us and continue with your studies. Um, we would hope that you wouldn't take that length of time because obviously we would like to see you through your studies um, and. Um, and also just to make sure that it is con continuing and you're keeping up to date with the knowledge that you have. But yeah, definitely, up to five years. Super. And uh, Aisha has completed uh, 12th grade and a cash level three. Um, she has been working for the past 12 years, uh, still working. Uh, is she eligible to follow the MED? If, well, I think we need to look at that level 12 because it depends where that has um, been carried out to make sure that it is equivalent to 
at least an undergraduate degree. So we, it must be equivalent to undergraduate degree level for you to be able to continue or to work on the MET. Right. Okay. Again, Alicia, please do get in touch uh, with your academic consultant and we're able to guide you on that. Okay. Um, and Lindy, um, would a person be able to work in an RB school once you have uh, qualified? That's, I suppose it's asking whether you can work in any other school, but um, particularly if you've got the IB certificates uh, alongside, then that makes you more um, eligible to work within the IB school, but obviously we can't guarantee a position in the IB school because like any, like say, any other job role, it's about applying for those roles. Um, so it doesn't guarantee you that, but it makes you uh, stand out because you've got those additional qualifications and certainly at master's level that is something that really is going to enhance your career opportunities. Right, super. And Charlene's um, question is what is the semester timeline? How, how long is that? Right. A semester is 20 weeks. Um, so you have, if you undertake a 30 credit module, so one credit uh, one module throughout the 20 weeks. They're looking at approximately 15 hours of study per week to be able to carry that out. Obviously, if you're doing fast track, then that is doubled. But yes, 20 weeks per semester. Right. Um, and Ferriel, uh, you, you're welcome. Uh, as I said, do, do get in touch uh, with uh, your academic consultant. Um, and oh, and Amber has got an interesting question. Is it possible to study for two specialisations simultaneously? No, when we say specialisations, we would assume that you mean a, a named award there, and the answer for that would be you can't go for the two named awards at the same time. However, you can go for a named award plus an IB elig certificate eligibility for that. Or you could undertake the general um, leading learning teaching route and then you could have two areas within that as your optional modules. So for example, optional modules, you could undertake um, developing mathematical thinking and you could undertake the leadership module. So therefore you would have the two interests within that one award. Okay, good. And uh, oh, Lindy has just given us some clarification. Um, if she takes the RB route, will she only be able to work in an RB school? No. Um, if you are studying at any postgraduate level, um, then the doors do open for you with those extra qualifications. Um, as to whether you are qualified within certain um, geographical areas, to be uh, to have a teaching license, then that's something that you would need to speak to the team at Stafford about, um, because they will have more local knowledge than I do, and everywhere is different. That's that's correct, and Marie's quite correct on that. Uh, so do get in touch with us um, if you're looking at, at that specific uh, question. Um, it's a it's a pleasure, Lindy. Okay, um, and Charlene has got an honours degree in educational management and leadership, and then she's obviously asking, would that be considered for for RPL? If you have been given a full award previously and then we couldn't use that towards an RPL. If it's a part of an award, then we will be able to use that um, towards RPL. So it depends whether you've obtained the full award or whether there's part, but again, it's something that we'll need to look at on a one-to-one -one basis. So again, speak to the team at Stafford initially, um, so they can actually look at the award first of all. Um, if they have any queries, I'm sure they'll come back to me and we can discuss that. Um, on an individual basis. Okay, um, and Benjamin uh, has got uh, two questions actually. What uh, percentage of the fees need to be paid before the program starts? Okay, 
Um, so I can, I can answer that, uh, Benjamin. Uh, we just really need uh, your first installment payment. Um, again, uh, this must have been given to you by our uh, academic consultants at Stafford. Um, so, and it gives you quite a, a detailed um, uh, instructions of what to do. So do get in touch with us with that and we can assist you with, with the fees. Uh, the second part of the question, is there a teaching practice session and how is that done? No, we don't have um, a practice award part of the study because it is a, a continual professional development program rather than a program that's specifically aimed at accreditation for a teaching license. Um, but again, you do need to speak to the team of Stafford to discuss the, the needs around that. Okay, and Pharrell's question is, uh, the leadership management of childhood practice, uh, what does that mean exactly? What, what does it cover? Well, um, we do have two routes that are available. So the module is the leadership of management of childhood practice, and that will take you through, um, we'll go towards an awards entitled the MED or Postgraduate Certificate Diploma um, in Childhood Studies and that will, the, the module of Leadership and Management will start to look at what it means to be a leader or a manager, how that relates to children's development. Um, so uh, it is specific for children, well children and young people basically from pre-birth all the way up to 16 or 18 years, depending on where you are in the world and how you define children. <laughs> Good, and uh, I see there's a question from John as well. Um, can he actually attend graduation at the campus and, and when is the graduation? We would welcome anybody to come over to Dundee and attend the graduation. So yes, that's definitely a possibility. Um, and graduations are held during the winter, um, we have the winter graduation or we have the summer graduation depending on when you qualify and the exam boards are. So these take place in November and June. So but there is a really good opportunity to be able to celebrate your achievement with family and also as tutors we enjoy being there celebrating with you as well. Good. Uh, so, John, yes, that would be great if you can um, get, go through to the university. Um, Charlene's question, if I do not have a formal teaching qualification per se, does this contribute um, to being a specialist teacher? I'm not quite sure. Either. I'm trying to decipher what that means. Oh, okay, wait, wait here we go. Okay, she's, I think she's, um, oh, is it recognized by schools? Okay, so she's saying if uh, I don't have a formal teaching qualification per se, does this contribute eligibility to being a specialist teacher? In other words, is it recognized by the schools? Okay. Um, I, I sort of understand what she's trying to say there. Um, Charlene, I, I think if, if there's any possibility that you can give me a call or, or your um, uh, student advisor at uh, Stafford Associates, um, we'll be able to give you some guidance uh, on that. Um, as, and as Marie has said, um, a lot of uh, the regions uh, have got different rules and regulations. A lot of schools have got different rules and regulations. Uh, so we'd love to chat to you to just find out a little bit about uh, your background, uh, what you're doing, which school you're at, um, and we'll be able to give you some guidance on that. Okay, and Khaled, um, what, what about the practical part of the program? In other words, the face-to-face -face, uh, part. Is it only in the UAE or is it in other countries? Uh, we enjoy being able to come out to Dubai and deliver these workshops. Um, it is two full days of action-packed workshops um, that we deliver, as I say, through induction workshop and then we also have the introduction to research. And there are a lot of benefits for students to come out to these. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's an opportunity for you to meet your peers um, and develop those working relationships. It's always good to have somebody to study alongside. It's also good for you to gain to meet us as tutors, to be able to ask any questions. Uh, we're there at that, and we can give you immediate responses. But also to de develop your confidence and, and to gain a really good understanding for you to move forward in your studies about what it means to be working at master's level. Right, and uh, Benjamin has a very interesting question. How many dissertation supervisors will be given and will I have the opportunity to choose a supervisor of my choice? Oh, that's a nice question. <laughs> okay, um, you do have the one dissertation supervisor. And these are closely matched to your area that you want to focus on. So, for example, I'm a dissertation supervisor, um, and my area of expertise is leadership. So, if you were undertaking something that focused on leadership, the likelihood is that you would come to me. So, it really does depend on the area that you want to extend your knowledge in, at depth, and carry out research, and how that is matched to our supervisors here because we've all got different areas of interests and expertise so um, and sometimes there is an additional person if we have a new tutor and um, who may be working alongside so they can gain that understanding of what it means to be a, su a dissertation supervisor but you will always be given an experienced supervisor. Good and uh, Tamsin's question is um, do you have to work in an IB school if I specifically follow the MED in international education pathway? No, um, anybody could follow the international education pathway. Uh, it's not related to international baccalaureate at all. Unless you decide you want to take the IB route that would give you eligibility for the IB certificates, and therefore it depends which of those certificates that you would be hoping to obtain um, as to whether you work in an IB school or not. But generally, uh, no, it's, uh, you don't have to be working within a school at all as long as you've got experience to reflect from um, for that award. Good. Uh, it's a pleasure, Tamsin. All right. Well, um, are there any other questions? Because we, I think we've actually gone through every single one of those questions, which is fantastic. Yes. Excellent. Are there any other questions? One or two last questions for Marie before we sign off? Um, well, it doesn't seem like it. Well, okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I hope it was very informative for you. Thank you so much for your questions. Fantastic questions this evening. Again, thank you so much, Marie. It was lovely seeing you again. Um, do get in touch with uh, your Stafford consultant. Uh, we are currently accepting applications for the next cohort. The sooner we get your applications in to Marie, the quicker we can get back to you on your very, very good uh, unconditional offer that you're looking for. Okay, and a very good evening to everyone. Thank you again, Marie, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.